So we have found the bomb bag, which is actually Leds, the Mogmas. So just exit the room and just walk straight ahead and you will find Led, who is happy that you found his bomb bag. However, after some short conversation, he will agree to lend it to you for the remainder of the dungeon. Or not really the remainder of the dungeon, but, well, forever. It's basically your bomb bag now. <laughs> This is pretty typical with Zelda. Oh, can you go find my item? And then you go find it, and then they just give it to you. Yay! Anyway, the bomb bag pretty much works just like it did in previous Zelda games. It allows you to store bombs, if that wasn't self-explanatory enough. Um, what's different in Skyward Sword that is unlike any Zelda game before is you can pick up bomb flowers that are on the ground, and once you pick them up, you can actually just press B and store them into your bomb bag. So the days of actually just finding bombs underneath po underneath like pots or purchasing them, uh, while you can still do that in some cases, uh, it's a lot easier to just find a single bomb flower, pick it up, store it in your bomb bag. Pick it up, pick up another one, store it in uh, your bomb bag. Since uh, bomb flowers they grow back in just a matter of seconds. Anytime you see a single bomb flower, you can almost immediately just restore or, you know, fill up your bomb bag every single time. It's pretty good. It uh, sort of eliminates the whole use of you ever needing, if, of you ever running out of bombs in a way. Uh, while there are times, especially in some of the other dungeons, where you will use bombs several times in a row. Uh, and you might run low on them, but uh, because of the, because every time you find the bomb flower, you can fill up. It sort of prevents that problem. Anyway, you, you could uh, ride on over to this center platform here in this main room, and save at the bird statue if you'd like. Uh, just on the other side of the room, there is a rock on this higher platform, and uh, now that we have bombs, we can pick one up and toss it over to the rock, blowing it up, causing a platform causing us to jump across to the platform. There is a Lizalfos on the other side here. Um, this could be a little challenging because uh, it's somewhat of a small platform, and especially right when you jump on over, the Lizalfos might hit you, causing you to fall into the magma below. But uh, just defeat it, and uh, unfortunately if you hit it off the ledge, you won't be able to pick up its treasure. Uh, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but every single Lizalfos will drop a treasure. It's the Lizalfos tail. Is it a treasure? Um, you don't actually use too many of these when upgrading your treasure, but uh, you will definitely need some of them. So uh, this is probably the easiest one to get because you're going to be killing a number of these Lizalfos throughout your quest. So uh, you'll be finding them anyway. Anyway, I'm absolutely failing here at these simple platform jumping. But you want to make your way over to this portion of the room, and this particular platform will take you upwards so that uh, you can reach the treasure chest over here. There are a number of red vocal blends here, so you can defeat them using any one of your methods, and for whatever reason, this one just kept blocking me over and over. Um, like I said, I like the method of just slashing to the right and then immediately slashing to the left. It uh, doesn't take too much strategy in that as long as you do it rapidly, you'll almost always hit a Boko Blin. Uh, once you are ready, pick up the dungeon map from the treasure chest. And as you can see, there's not too much to fill in. There's basically, in a sense, two rooms, but they're both very long and windy rooms. And uh, like I said at the beginning of this dungeon, this is a very short dungeon. It's, uh, it's even... More than that, it's more of a small dungeon than a short dungeon. It is short, it's only, it'll take, you know, just if you're getting everything in the dungeon, just to get to the boss, it should take you less than half an hour, uh, assuming you don't, you know, die a number of times. But, um, it's, it's very small in that there is only, I mean, there's the intro room, there's the main corridor, the main room, basically, and there's those two windy corridors. And then other than that, there's the boss room, this particular dungeon map room, and the mini-boss room. So really, there's like, I don't know, I sort of lost count, but about seven rooms throughout the entire 
game, throughout the entire dungeon. And uh, this is one thing that I think Skyward Sword, it, it's, it's something that the game like fundamentally is all about. It's not about these long, huge, wide open areas. Like, you're not going to find a dungeon like, uh, say, from Ocarina of Time, the Water Temple, or the Forest Temple, or pretty much every single one of Twilight Princess's dungeons. Um, they're more condensed dungeons, where there's not that many rooms, but there's a lot to do in each room. Uh, and I guess this is, uh, this is sort of a change for the Zelda series as a whole. Um, I, I suppose there was parts of Spirit Tracks that were like, that were like this, but, um, for the most part, I'd say almost every single Zelda game that I can think of, even dating back to the original Legend of Zelda, and Link to the Past, and Link's Awakening, it's all about these dungeons that have tons of tons of rooms. This one sort of breaks that mold. Anyway, if you look at your map, there's an X on the east side of this large room. And if you run on over, there's this area of the wall which you can toss two bombs at and it will blow it up, allowing you to continue along the pathway. And we're just going to be staying on top of this large ball throughout much of this long corridor. It's, uh, I guess this is the unique gameplay mechanic of this dungeon. And one thing you've noticed I've been doing is I've been using bombs to defeat the magma spoon. Uh, one bomb will defeat the magma spoon, and it's a good idea just to get rid of them to get them out of the way. There is this small room to the side, and I guess its main purpose is to fill up on hearts and to restock bombs, because we're going to need some more bombs in the next portion of this room. Uh, so be sure to restock all your bombs, and then uh, ride on over with the ball here. There is, it appears that like you can't continue forward with your, the rolling ball, but uh, after you defeat the Bokoblin here, if you look at your map, it's another one of those cases where there is a, there's almost like a little corridor around here, but it's blocked off because there's a wall in your way. Just like before, you can use two bombs to blow a hole in the boulder and uh, it'll allow you to roll on through. Uh, once, you're, once you've blown a hole here, you want to pull out your beetle, and there's this little like dragon-like statue that you can send the beetle into. It's a very narrow area, so you might hit a series of walls, but there is a silver rupee at the other end, and uh, this is very important because the silver rupee contains 100 rupees, so you certainly want to pick that one up. There's really no reason not to. Afterwards, continue along with this ball across this little narrow corridor and uh, you will find a, a number of these magma spooms. Afterwards, just jump on over to the platform here. And, uh, you can break the pot for some rupees. But there is a gate here in the distance that sort of blocks your pathway. Uh, much like the drawbridge earlier, there are ropes that are connected to gears that uh, control the door. There's one on this side of the door and that will only raise it up a little bit. Uh, what you need to do is send out the beetle through the door on the left and just control it with the Nintendo Wiimote. And uh, it's kind of fun actually. I like you know being able to control the beetle. And you have to turn it through this little passageway and once you get to the other side of the bridge you'll be able to cut the rope. I like puzzles like this. I think they're fun. Uh, it's rather simple. I mean, it, they could have done a little more with it, at least later on. But it's sort of that out-of-the-box type thinking that uh, I sort of like. And I wish there was a little more of it, but it was pretty good. Anyway, you could uh, roll on over, and uh, it's a good idea to jump off to the platform and then uh, run up this little corridor and save at the bird stage. Uh, the reason being is anytime you die pretty much inside a dungeon or you'll basically return to the last bird statue that you saved at so uh, just in case I suppose if you you know if you lose your life while you are in this area before getting to the next bird statue you don't have to go through the whole rolling ball portion uh, you don't want to get wait until the statue sort of like stops spinning fire and then you can easily just roll across on your ball. Uh, this area, it looks a lot more difficult than it actually is. In fact, 
like this was incredibly easy for me but uh, there were some Japanese commercials where they had some uh, female celebrities playing through this area <laughs> and it shows that like falling off the ledge and uh, I thought that was a little over exaggeration because I thought that little pathway is very easy in fact I you know I don't think I've, I haven't ever fallen and uh, people I've spoken to basically you know in, in regards to that commercial it showed these two Japanese women falling at that area sort of misleading making it look like it's harder than it really is Anyway, uh, this platform to the left has a Lizalfos. It's completely optional. You don't have to come over here. But there is a treasure chest that contains a red rupee. So it's a good idea to just make your way over here to collect the treasure chest as well as to defeat the Lizalfos to get its tail as a treasure. So now we've finally made it to the other side of this room and uh, we're back at the, the main central room if you haven't noticed uh, and we're able to push in the switch on this side causing the platforms to raise and uh, you'll be able to climb on up a hole sort of appears on the right side where you can roll on through I guess this is just in case if you didn't uh, hit the switch over there on the other side you can just do it right then and there uh, you could save at the bird statue, I sort of chose not to for some reason, but uh, it's a good idea just because that, again, will be the most recent save location. On this area, it's a kind of a somewhat unique puzzle. Uh, but first and foremost, there's some soft soil locations on the side, so uh, be sure to fill up on your items if you need to. Uh, but in this next area, there's this ascent area where you have to run up a like a steep incline and uh, you need to use your stamina meter you don't have unlimited stamina so you'll have to dash up but there are these boulders that will sort of fall down towards you and I completely messed up that time but um yeah that was just had failure written all over it but um the second set of boulders that come down there's it's just boulders all the way across there's no holes for you to run up so what you'll need to do is like stop off at this side platform to the left, regain your stamina, and then continue up to the very top of the incline. Uh, there's a second one of these inclines, but uh, this one takes a little more thinking because there is no safe passageway on the left because there is a boulder that is blocking it. So uh, there's a little puzzle in terms of how to you know, remedy the situation. So just crawl through the hole on the right, and uh, you can fill up your bombs if you'd like. And then uh, dig up the soft soil location found here, creating an air geyser, allowing you to reach the higher platform. Just uh, climb the stairs here, and then run on over, and you'll be on a ledge that's hanging over this ascent area. And you can see the boulder to the left, and what you need to do is toss a bomb, but toss it up the incline so that it rolls down, and if you time it nicely, it will blow up that boulder that's on the side of the wall. Now this will allow us, while we're running up the incline, we'll be able to stop at the side so we avoid the boulders. It's a nice little puzzle, and I, this is one of the things I like about Zelda games in general. I don't think there was enough of this, where they show you a puzzle, the first like incline puzzle. You do it, and then they immediately throw another very similar puzzle at you. But it's a little different in that there's a new twist to it of sorts. If you look at your dungeon map at this point, you'll find that we are right outside of the dungeon room. And as that little cutscene just showed, the dungeon boss door is right nearby. Uh, be sure to save at the bird statue here, and then climb up the ramp. There is this incline passage here so just run on up and at the very top of this little incline, for some reason the music goes away when you're up here. It's kind of creepy. I guess it's a foreshadowing something to come. But you can get the dragon sculpture and this is the boss key of the earth temple. Afterwards run on down and then ah! a boulder comes crashing down towards you and all you have to do is just run straight ahead it's sort of a weird angle you could you know 
look ahead so that you're looking in the direction you're running if you'd like but you got to be quick just jump on down and the boulder will clog up the mouth allowing you to pass the uh, the lava that was being spit at you afterwards that boulder will get like sucked into the next room but just run on over use the uh, the boss key that we just got the sculpture place it into the door and then uh, you'll automatically head on in to take on the dungeon boss which we will cover in the next video so I'll see you guys then Thank <laughs> you.